service today? So oils. We're going to talk about oils. Let's That's talk about correct. oils. It's a lot of different kind of oils out there. Uh, they, uh, there are oils that are called superior oils, uh -huh. which you're probably familiar with, but they really aren't. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're inferior oils because they're not as effective as uh, the more highly refined horticultural oils. They, uh, the highly refined horticultural oils are 98% pure. They're less likely to cause injury to new foliage and, mm -hmm. and to sensitive plants than the superior oils. However, uh, and many of the superior oils are plant-based. Uh, they can be soybean oil, canola oil, sesame seed oil. Uh, uh, neem oil is neem an oil, example right. of a, uh, uh, also a plant-based oil. Uh, we're going to actually, I'm going to mix up some neem oil and demonstrate how to, to, to use it uh, primarily because neem oil, <coughs> excuse me, neem oil also has uh, fungicidal activity, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially on powdery mildew. And uh, if uh, you get a, do a good job of, of, of coverage, then you can have some control there. Uh, How about the mode of action of the oil? Mode of action, right. right, they primarily work by stopping up the spiracles or the breathing tubes of insects. All right and uh, smothering the eggs mm -hmm. as the primary mode of control, but it also, as a mode of action, it, it can disrupt cell membranes, mm -hmm. causing the insect or egg to, to desiccate mm -hmm. and dry out. And uh, so it actually has two modes of action that, that it's, uh, uh, where it's working, but uh, it is imperative that you get 100% yeah. control. You have to have complete control of, yeah. of uh, or complete coverage to get complete control uh, of uh, of uh, the insects and so eggs that no you're trying to kill. So there's no residual with the oil. Absolutely no residual. Yeah. Uh, and one of the problems, but a benefit, is uh, if you're trying to to uh, if mites or or mite eggs or, or or one of your targets you're trying you're trying to kill, uh -huh. you're also going to kill the beneficial mites. Ah. However, because you have no residual, beneficials can come back in there and they can hopefully build up oh, faster point. than the bad ones gotcha. can. Gotcha. Gotcha. But uh, it doesn't have any, it, it, they're contact only. It's a contact uh, insecticide, which again is why you have to have contact right. to, uh, to uh, uh, get control. You know, these trees that we're standing around here, I'm gonna do a demonstration on the bark okay. just to show how to uh, make sure you get good penetration and good coverage. Okay. But I wouldn't be trying to, the only <laughs> way I would try to spray these trees is with a helicopter or an air blast sprayer <laughs> or something like that right. because only what I spray is, has any, any coverage, and on a tree like this, it's 1%. Uh, right. The neem oil that we've got here, I uh, looked at the label, and it's two, we, we've got a gallon of water right. already in the sprayer, gallon. and uh, the neem oil is, uh, I think, two, uh, two tablespoons per gallon of water. Okay. And I just happen to have a tablespoon here. You notice I'm not wearing rubber gloves. I see gloves. you don't have gloves. I don't right. wear rubber, I'm not wearing rubber gloves, and if you see me mix up any other pesticide, I've always worn rubber gloves. Yeah, but uh, the reason is, uh, the hortic all of the horticultural oils have no mammalian toxicity. They're That's very safe, and, and uh, so I'm not worried about, okay. you know, getting poisoned. I, I'm not gonna try to inhale the, <laughs> the uh, 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 spray mist. Yeah. Oh, that probably wouldn't do me any good, but uh, they are—they're very safe, very safe to use. Uh, many plants. There are quite a few plants that are can that are susceptible or can be damaged by horticultural oil. So it's very important that you read the label and yes. follow the label right. instructions with horticultural oil, just just like you would uh, any other pesticide. Okay. But we're gonna we're gonna put one tablespoon in here. Uh. And that was a little bit more. So I'll try to do a little bit less here. A little less. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I think that'll work. That works. I'm gonna shake that up good. The oil, oils are, you know, inherently don't like to mix with water. Yeah. So it's pretty important that you, if you're spraying an oil, that you've mixed with water, that you mix, shake it up, you keep it agitated, because if it settles out, you may be just spraying water, water. Yeah. and the water's not gonna do you any good, or you may be spraying 100% oil, which could, which could damage your foliage, right. you know, or damage your plant. Yeah, burn it. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna go down here. Okay. Pump it up. 
too. And I guess yeah. too, we need to be mindful of what wind, temp, you know, right. wind direction. Right. And yeah, speed. you don't want to. You don't want to. You right. don't want to spray yourself. Right. You don't want the wind to blow it on you. Okay. Uh, the finer the droplet, the better. Okay. And I don't. I haven't. Let's see what we've got here. That's pretty fine. Okay. So I'm going to make sure I get in on both sides of the crevices here. Just spray to the point of runoff. It doesn't need to. You don't want it to drip. You want okay. to make sure you get it wet. Uh, it's important to uh, not spray when the temperature is below 40 degrees and don't spray when the temperature is greater than 90 degrees. It's best if the humidity is low because uh, uh, higher humidity can create problems. It's good if you can spray on a bright, sunshiny day, but if you're out there spraying and you get a little light rain, that's not going to be a problem because the oil is going to repel it. And again, you said this is, has contact activity. It's right? a contact, yeah. contact insecticide or, or fungicide. It even on the on the powdery mildew, it just kills the spores because by coming in contact. Now I'm going to get over here on this side. Okay. And it and as as good as the coverage is, as good as this coverage is, even within that bark, there are probably some insect eggs and some scale insects yeah. and mite eggs that are, are not protected. So I may have to come back and uh, you may have to treat more than once. You know, a couple of weeks later, you may want to come back again, but then you also have to keep in mind that uh, the dormant rate is for when the plants are dormant. Uh, horticultural oils, mm -hmm. You can also spray them because they're more highly refined. You can spray them during the growing season. However, your rate per gallon of water will be lighter during the growing season than during the dormant season. Most of the time, the horticultural oils, uh, the rate is a two to three percent uh, ingredient, uh, a two, two to three percent uh, solution. And uh, with this neem oil that we mixed up, that was probably only about a one percent solution, so okay. it was a little bit lighter. This is lighter. Oh. Yeah, but uh, it's very important that you check your label. Uh, I know uh, red maples, Japanese maples, uh, walnuts, hickories, are, are are you can't spray with oils. They're they're susceptible, and and there's quite a few more plants than you would think yeah. that. Uh, that can be burned. Right, with probably these like oils. evergreens and things like that. A lot for of sure. evergreens. Yeah, a lot of you evergreens. Pretty much need to avoid green tissue. Right. You know, if okay. you can. Except for the the plants that can tolerate it. Right. And the sure. plants that can tolerate it in the summertime, you know, you you go okay as long as you go with a lighter rate. Lighter rate. That's the According to the label. It. According to the label. Right. According label. to the label. Appreciate label. that demonstration, Mr. D. Okay, good deal. Right. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.